Gosh, I forgot to hit record. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hi y'all, my name is Belle and welcome back to my channel. Today I had the awesome opportunity to get to interview the absolute amazing Cami Garcia. Um, it was such a pleasure getting to talk with her and I hope y'all enjoy it. Don't mind the different setting. Um, I just got out of practice and realized, hey, I still have a video to edit, <laughs> but I hope y'all enjoy. I definitely did. I had such a great time talking to Cami, and I hope y'all really also love our interview. So I hope y'all enjoy it and let me know what you think after you finish watching. I'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with um, just tell me a little bit about yourself and then um, your book as well. So I'm Cami Garcia. I am um, best known as the co-author of the Beautiful Creatures series um, and the Dangerous Creatures series. I also have a number of um, young adult solo novels like The Lovely Reckless and um, Broken Beautiful Hearts. And more recently, I started writing graphic novels and I'm the author of a Teen Titan series with artist Gabriel Piccolo. And um, yeah, the, so the first book in the series was uh, Teen Titans Raven and the new book is Teen Titans Beast Boy. I absolutely loved Beast Boy and I really did love Raven, but I think Beast Boy has a favorite in me. Um, Gabriel, Beast Boy is Gabriel's favorite too. I'm going to like mute myself every now and then just because um, my mic sometimes cuts out. Um, okay. So I have five questions for you today. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't add more because I am on a time limit. <laughs> um, so first up, we have, how was the experience of creating Beast Boy different from Raven? Beast Boy's kind of like a more fun-loving character. Raven's a little bit dark and moody, and her story's a little darker. Um, Gar is kind of like a fun-loving, you know, pizza-eating you know, vegetarian. And so his, his story kind of has more of the tone of his personality. So I think it's a little bit lighter. And I have to agree on that. Um, he is definitely a character I related a lot to. Um, I actually really, really liked that you guys included a little bit in the intro about um, him having kind of like that insecurity about his weight. Um, because I am also having problems gaining weight. And so that little like small connection just really hit me hard. And I was like, holy cow, was not expecting to see that. So up next we have, what were the key challenges you faced in drafting this story? Um, this, this story was pretty easy because um, like we had the experience of working together on Raven. The hardest thing was that um, Beast Boy's power is he turns into animals and he develops the power over the course of a story. He doesn't know he has it. And one of the things about our series is that um, the characters are very similar. You know, they seem like real teens. So, um, you know, you don't, you can't see their powers right away. You know, when they realize they have them, you try to keep them hidden. So we couldn't have Beast Boy have like green skin the way he does in the comics or just like turn into animals in front of everyone because it's a secret. So um, one of the things was like, how do we show him using and developing the animal powers before he transforms? And so what we did was um, he kind of channels the abilities of the animals before he fully changes. And Gabriel would draw the animal kind of behind him you know, like a kind of superimposed so you could tell what power he was using and then his eyes turn green whenever he uses the powers. And I noticed a lot of that. Um, I really, really loved the detail you both put into it. Like I could tell the detail was in the uh, dialogue. It was in the art itself. And I really, really love that about it. I love that like he doesn't have the power right off the bat because again yeah he is a teen it wouldn't make sense for that um and i love that you guys added that in where he's gonna evolve into it almost more like he has to learn he doesn't just have it right off the bat we like the the characters that kind of you know make mistakes and you know don't have it perfect and if you have a character like superman who knows how to use his powers really well that doesn't work I agree with you, um, especially because, as you said, he is a teen, and I, that's another thing I connected with him on. I am 17 myself, and that experience of him going through his years as a teenager 
was, well, it was in the background. It wasn't a main focus. It was also like there that I could notice it and connect to it and be like, hey, this is realistic. While also being a little fantasy and a little sci-fi, but it's there. So I really love that. Next, we have, were there any instances where your ideas clashed with each other on this story? Not really, because Gabriel and I work really closely. So at the beginning, even though I right start working and he designs the characters. So even though I know kind of the outline, I don't sit down and write dialogue and stuff yet. So he designs the characters, we go back and forth, we collaborate. And then once I've seen the characters and he sends me like, it's called like a character sheet. It will have like some outfits and some expressions. Then I start writing and he turns in pages as I'm writing. So I also get to see the finished product and in that way, like once he brings a character to life on the page, it also kind of starts to be like the guiding principle in the way I'm writing because it makes the character seem real. So then it's like, I know who I'm writing. And so, you know, whenever he and I disagree, which is usually on minor stuff, we just like kind of plead our case to each other. And usually whoever's like the more passionate about it wins. Like if he's like, no, we have to have this thing on the page. Like I just let him have it. And, you know, if I explain to him, like something doesn't work because it'll give away something else, then he'll be like, okay, I'm going to fix it and do it later. Um, really love that about it. Um, I think that's really important. I loved everything you just said. Because um, especially when you have like both novels and graphic novels where two authors or in, two illustrators are working together, it's really important for that collaboration to be there. So I'm really excited to hear that. And it, that's awesome. I love that <laughs> so much. And like that shows up in the page too. I think like when you really collaborate and respect each other and also have fun, like that comes out in the product. I completely agree. And it definitely showed through Beast Boy. I loved every single part of this book. So just a little uh, bit early. But <laughs> Next um, we have, and this is the second to last question. Wow, this is going faster than I thought. <laughs> Um, we have, if you had to choose one character from Beast Boy to make real, who would it be and why? I mean, I think it would have to be Gar because he's just so adorable and I love him. Um, if it wasn't Gar, it would be Stella. She's, um, she's kind of uh, like based on my daughter. So um, my daughter is, um, is uh, half Cuban and she used to have a blue streak in her hair. Now she has purple streaks because of Raven. Um, she matches, she did it for the book when the book came out and, um, she loves, you know, fancy rats and, um, she's actually weirdly, um, it's like, but I kind of put a little of her into, um, tank and a little of her into Stella, his best friends. Cause she's also dyslexic like tank and, um, tank is an athlete like my son. So I kind of put a little of them into the characters because that doesn't always work. Like you can't really model characters after people, you know, unless it, you know, lends itself to it naturally, or it feels weird. Um, but this was fun because, um, you know, I, I mean, you always draw from people, you know, and I don't usually do, um, you know, some of my books, like, you know, I always, I'm very superstitious. So I would never base a character on someone I knew if I was going to have like bad things happen to them. And I don't always know in my novels, like sometimes the story will take a turn, but in the graphic novel, you have to plan it out so carefully that I know kind of what's going to happen to them. That is, uh, I, I don't have another word in my vocabulary other than amazing. <laughs> um, but that is really. I want to do something bad to like a character based on someone I knew. Yeah. I can, I can definitely see that. And I also, I really love that bit about your kids being like not all in about the characters, but a part of the characters also. Um, that's that's really just sweet to hear. And it's also like, oh, these are somewhat like connected to real people and their instances are based off of real experiences. So that's really good to hear. And then lastly, oh man, <laughs> are there any scenes within Beast Boy that you love more than the others? I really love the pages where he transforms, like the animal pages, because Gabriel draws animals really well. And I knew that ahead of time because I'd seen his other work and he puts a lot of animals in his work and he loves to draw animals. So, for example, like I had seen um, art of his that had like a snake in it. 
sort of put a snake in the story on purpose. Like, so some of the animals that were in the book were inspired by like animals I had seen him draw. Uh, because then I just knew they were going to turn out amazing. And then there were some new ones like Beast Boy has, he acquires um, a pet in the, in the story, a little monkey named Kong. And I knew Gabriel liked to draw monkeys, but he usually draws like big monkeys, like, you know, apes, like gorillas. And he said it took him a while to get the hang of like the small monkey, but he does such a good job. And he looks exactly like a real capuchin monkey, which is cute. But I feel like the transformations are really the pages that like jump out at you because they're really powerful. And, um, you know, Gabriel did such a good job of, you know, making it realistic of how it, you know, happens as we talked about it, you know, we kind of discussed it so much because he said like, in order to draw it really well, he wanted to understand how it worked. So we figured out how it worked and then he would do the art based on that. So, and I think those are going to be people's favorites too. Cause they're so cool looking. They are definitely a favorite of mine for sure. I, on, I agree with you. I think they are really, really powerful. Um, for me, when I first turned that first page to his like transformation, I was like, Whoa, like <laughs> I was not expecting that. And it was amazing. And it was so detailed and the story behind it, it just made it all the more better and all the more, I don't know, experiencing like, I can't form the words right now, but like I had such an amazing experience reading those He's, pages. Gabriel has a way of like drawing things that are really, really relatable. And I feel like that even when he draws something kind of magical, because like his characters are so relatable, it makes it feel like more powerful when you see it. Cause it, you know, you feel connected to it. That's, you know, one reason why like from the beginning, um, you know, I wanted him to work on the series with me because I saw his work and I felt like he, you know, there, it looks very teen. Like it looks really age appropriate. You know, some people draw teenagers and they, you know, looks like adults drawing teenagers. They just look like small miniature adults. And, um, Gabriel makes teenagers look like teens and, but he also does a really good job of really making you fall in love with the character so that by the time you know, you get to something like dramatic happening to them, you really care about it. I agree full heartedly on that. Well, that is it. I can't have, I should have come up more questions, but I did not. And I'm so sorry about that. I'll tell you, I'll tell everyone a little, I'll give you a little tidbit. So the other thing about the book is, I sure you know this because you read the book, but at the end of the book, there is a surprise. Um, there is a um, sample, there's a preview of the next book in the series at the end of Beast Boy. And the next book is Beast Boy Loves Raven. And um, there is a cover in the back of Beast Boy and a sample of like, I think it's probably six pages, maybe six or seven. And um, it gives you kind of um, the first time they meet in person. So a lot of people were really upset when they read Raven. So they were like, why is she with this boy? Like, who is this guy? And Beast Boy meets a girl in this one too. And I always tell people, you know, these are the origin stories, so they don't know each other yet. You know, none of the Titans know each other yet. And so um, I think people are really excited to see them actually like meet on the page. I, I am going to be honest, I have not read that snippet because I don't want to spoil myself and I don't want to be like, oh, wait, what? And, but I am really, really excited for the next book in this series. I think you guys are doing such an amazing job on it already. And I have to thank you because honestly, this has definitely brought me a lot of joy. And I've been in a kind of dark place for a while. And these two stories have really helped me pull myself out of that. So I really do appreciate it having just those stories to be there for me when I kind of feel uh, alone. It, it's a really joyful experience for me. So thank you. And more graphic novels. I feel like that's one of the things about them because I suffer from depression and anxiety. And I feel like one of the things I love about graphic novels is like, they're such a good um, combination of like reading, but also like a real distraction where you can like get out of your head and just like enjoy something. And there's a lot of, I mean, there's so many great ones in the DC line. There's so many other, it's, I feel like graphic novels have really taken off in the last few years. So there's so many out there now. And there's even some, um, you know, the deal with like can't characters that have anxiety and, or realistic situations like, you know, um, 
eating disorders, um, anxiety, depression, um, you know, um, family problems, parents getting divorced. Like, so I feel like they're great because you can kind of read a story that, you know, kind of uh, mirrors what's happening in your own life. And for me, at least that's a really good way when I start getting anxious and getting my head, it's a really good way to kind of like trick myself. And I love that. I love everything about what you just said, because I felt the exact same way while reading this. It was like, almost like a wake up call, like, hey, it's going to get okay. You're not alone. Like this book literally called to me in that way. So I really do appreciate it for both you and for Gabriel for giving us this story. It is one of my favorites by far, and I will definitely be rereading it in the future. Oh, uh, thank So with that being said, I'm going to... For everybody who watches this video after I post it, make sure to buy Beast Boy because I highly suggest as me and Cammy have talked here. It is amazing. And then thank you to you, Cammy. And I'm going to shout into the void. Thank you to Gabriel as well. Um, I really appreciated you being here and giving me the chance to interview you. It's definitely been an honor and I will never forget this experience. So thank you so thank much. Thanks for having me. And have a great day. <laughs> okay. Bye, hon. Bye.